Oh, did you feel it, Beetle? Did you feel the rumblings? Was it really an earthquake that rattled Gillette Stadium and the entire coast today? Or maybe it was just the arrival of Patriots potential quarterback, Savior Drake May. He was in Foxborough today. The Patriots hosting the former UNC QB on a top 30 visit. May is a consensus top three pick with many mocks having him headed to New England. This will be the third meeting between May and the Pats as he met with the team at the NFL Combine and during UNC's Pro Day. And this is where we begin our deep dive as we welcome in Mark the Beetle Bertrand from 98.5 The Sports Hub. Beetle, big meeting for Drake May and the Patriots today. You have been a big proponent of the Patriots taking draft May, as I have been as well. I've said many times I think he's the best quarterback prospect in this year's class. My question to you is what would you be asking him today? If you were in one of those seats across the table from Drake May at one Patriot place this afternoon, what's the first question you ask him? You know, I think the thing I would want to know more about if I'm interviewing Drake May is about his struggles, about the things that went wrong this year, about the things that he has been criticized for last season at UNC. That's where he had some issues uh, completing passes. That's when he had issues under pressure. That's when he had issues with his offensive line. Those might be some of the same problems that he has if he's to be drafted by the Patriots. So I'd like for them to hear more about that and get his opinion on why it was that he struggled at times last year. That's the thing to ask him about, right? I mean, if you are the New England Patriots and you are getting ready to invest this third overall pick, you've never been here in Robert Kraft's ownership. You haven't been picking this high since you drafted Drew Bledsoe before the Crafts bought the team. You have to understand what went into this past season, 2023, why it looked so different from 2022. And here's what I'm going to do, Beetle. I'm actually going to try to trick him. I'm going to try to get him to really, really lay out his former coaching staff. I want him to crush them. Hey, Drake, how bad was it? Tell us. That staff had no idea what they were doing, right? That scheme, that scheme had to have been a mess, right? Go into detail as to just how ugly that thing was. And I want to see what he says. Because if he does, if he really drills them, that to me is not what I want to hear if I'm the New England Patriots. Because I want a quarterback who's going to be willing to go into a bad situation and take on all the blame if it doesn't work out yeah. well. That's what I want for my quarterback. And so that answer will tell me a lot because he has the opportunity. The Patriots coaching staff already knows it. They already know the scheme in 2023 was not good. It changed from 22 to last season. And if they hear him really take the onus on himself – I think that would speak volumes as to his football character. Elliot Wolf spoke not too long ago about toughness and accountability and leadership when it comes to this position. If he goes into that meeting and he trashes on the coaching staff at UNC, do you know what you have? You have Mac Jones 2.0. And that is exactly what the Patriots are trying to avoid with this pick. Slightly more physically gifted. Slightly more physically gifted, I'm but when it comes to those intangible things, you're right. You're yes. right, and that's the last thing you want. You're right. Elliot Wolf has been very open about the fact that that's not what he wants. Is Elliot Wolf the most important person for May to impress during this meeting? Yes, because he has final say. And so, if there is disagreement in that room with any number of scouts and executives that will be contributing to the conversation about who the team should be drafting at three, the tiebreaker is Wolf. So that's the guy that needs to be impressed by Drake May and needs to feel confident in Drake May as a player, as a quarterback, at the most important position in the sport. He needs to feel good about it. I agree with you on that front, too, and, and I think this meeting is especially important because the tape has been digested by now, right? They know what he is as a football player. They understand what he can do and what he might be able to do with a little bit more coaching and a little bit more development. What interests me about how this meeting goes is how you impact other people, how you interact with those around you, how you elevate the energy in the room, that seemed to really impact Elliot Wolf when he was reportedly beat. One of the driving forces that helped general manager in Cleveland, John Dorsey, draft Baker Mayfield number one overall. He wasn't as physically gifted as Lamar Jackson. He wasn't as physically gifted as Josh Allen, didn't have the arm, didn't have the size, but he had this other thing. He had this moxie, he had this winning quotient that was really hard to put your finger on, but Elliot Wolf at the time said he could see that in Baker Mayfield. So can Drake May show him something similar in this meeting? That's what I'm fascinated Yeah, by. I think his personality is a little different from someone like Baker Mayfield. I mean, Baker Mayfield has confidence that is bordering on cocky, right? Which is sometimes a good thing bordering for, on. for a quarterback. <laughs> I mean, on his best day, it's bordering. On his <laughs> right. worst day, it's full-blown cocky and it gets out of control. They want to see some of that swagger. 
to be the franchise quarterback, there's so many pieces that go into it from a personality standpoint. When it comes to those things we just talked about, when it comes to accountability, when it comes to leadership, when it comes to getting guys all pulling in the same direction. But then there's this other part. What kind of confidence does the guy have in himself to go out and win a game from minute one until minute 60? I think those are the things that you have to try and get from these meetings without really getting a chance to see the guy in a locker room, in a practice and game situation. Because as much as these teams try to learn over these next three weeks, in the final weeks leading up to the draft, they'll never be able to simulate what a week in the NFL is for any of these guys, no matter how good they think they are. I'm wondering, because Gerard Mayo at the owners' meetings recently, Beatle brought up Drake May's floor, quote-unquote floor, almost unprompted. He was asked about Drake May, but he talked about, boy, this guy's got all the potential in the world. There's no ceiling on a player like that, but you have to think about his floor, too. Does that worry you, that his potential floor might creep into their heads? As somebody who wants the Patriots to draft Drake May, if he's there for them at three, does it worry you that they may get obsessed by his floor and thereby pass on the opportunity to take Well, when he mentioned the floor, I wondered – if they looked at him and thought the floor in the near future, the next couple of years, is not what it is for some other guys in the draft. And I, I think that when you look at three, and if it's Jaden Daniels available there or it's Drake May, you might look at these two guys. And what I would say is if you want a high floor for the next two years, then you go with Jaden Daniels. If you want a high floor for the next ten, I think you go with Drake May. And, and that's how I think they should look at it. I think they should invest in developing – Whichever quarterback they choose, and if it's Drake May, he is probably the guy that needs more development than most of the guys at the top of this draft. So, so I hope that they don't get obsessed with what his floor is on day one. Yeah, I don't think they'll get too cute. I, I think they'll understand the potential. And I think, honestly, in the conversations that I've had, I think they're confident in the offensive staff that they have there and the ability to develop young quarterbacks between Alex Van Pelt and Ben McAdoo. I think they have the right people. They think they have the right people to be able to get the most out of a young quarterback. We mentioned Drake May in these mock drafts and just how highly he's rated. I left my latest mock draft to you. I put it into your hands. I put out a poll asking if Caleb Williams goes one and Jaden Daniels goes two, what should the Patriots do with the third overall pick? A resounding 70% answered draft Drake May. The people have spoken, Beetle. Different trade scenarios combining for 26% and drafting J.J. McCarthy receiving just 3.6%. I want to hear from you again. What would you best describe as a successful Patriots 2024 draft? Land your franchise QB? But little else, draft three core starters, but no quarterback of the future, or end up with the Patriots uh, having a starting caliber left tackle and a starting caliber receiver and a starting caliber quarterback, but not a franchise guy. Go vote in our poll on NBCSportsBoston.com slash early edition or scan the QR code on the screen. It's right there right now. Beetle, what to you is a successful well, 2024 Patriots draft? You know, I just have a few things to say. First, I felt the earth move under my feet today, Phil. And I thought it may be the earthquake, but what it really was was a groundswell of support yes. for Drake May. You yes. and I have been beating this drum, Phil, and now we are starting to see some results in the polling that people are joining us in this parade for Drake May. So uh, now on to what would be a successful draft. That has to be this team finding their next quarterback. I think over everything else, finding the quarterback will determine whether or not we look back at the 2024 draft and decide if it was a good draft or a bad draft. If I were putting money on this, I'm betting on this team to take a quarterback high, and whether or not that quarterback fails or succeeds will have a big impact on where this team goes in the next several years. So that, to me, is what will determine this draft in a lot of ways. Even if they draft well after that quarterback, I don't think it'll be enough to look back and say that was a great draft. And I think if they hit on the quarterback and they flunk on every other pick, it will still be a good draft. We'll look at it and say it doesn't matter that in the second, third, fourth round they whiffed. They got the quarterback, and that's more important than anything else. I am with you. Everything hinges on that third overall pick and the quarterback they take there that we think they will take there and how he performs. I do wrestle with it for a second, Beetle, because as Patriots fans, we could go all the way back to the mid-90s and think about, okay, well, what if they get Ty Law and Curtis Martin and Ted Johnson on the same draft? What if they get Devin McCourty and Rob Gronkowski in the same draft? That would have to be considered a successful draft too, right? But I think with the quarterback class, the way it's shaped up to be perceived – by the league with these three players at the very top that are all considered legit. If you don't get one of those and he doesn't hit, I think it's really hard to consider a successful draft, even if you get Pro Bowl players at some other positions. Yeah, I know you're jumping around there in the 90s with a, a few different drafts with the players you could take away from and say those are good picks. But if you draft, 
if you draft Rick Meyer in 1993, all of it's for naught, right? You're not talking about a good team or a team that's, that's building towards them. No shot. And uh, to look at our poll right now, 68, 65% of you are saying that you want the franchise quarterback, and if you get little else, it doesn't bother you at all. We're with you. I think we convinced him. Again, Beetle, there's that groundswell you were talking about.